right, so we are here with the challengers for the Vixens Tag Team uh, Championship today. We've got Tracy Bowling. We've got Megan Smith, right? All right. So this is Megan's first time bowling uh, the WCS stuff. How you How you feeling? I'm a little nervous, but I'm up for the challenge. <laughs> it's all right. Being nervous is fun. You got Tracy, is a great bowler, coming off of that uh, all that work she put in at uh, at Battle Bowl. Um, how you doing? A little tired, bowled a lot, you know, and Holy's always a tiring weekend, but here to get a job done. But you handle it quite well between the staff side and, uh, and bowling and stuff, and y'all are phenomenal. How's the team celebration been going for since the Battle Bowl win? Uh, team celebration has been pretty good. We've been we've been riding it. Um, you know, seeing everybody, they're like, "What's up, champ?" It just it never gets old hearing that. So hopefully, hopefully, we're gonna walk away with another champ today. Hey, well, good luck to you. How how many games is it gonna be? I'm hoping only four, but I'm gonna probably go say it's probably gonna go seven. You got another unholy squad to bowl later? Yep, tonight at seven. And tonight at seven. All right, what about you? Nope, I'm done. You're done. All right, so you don't care how many it goes. You just want to win. Yes. Cool, awesome. Well, good luck to you both, and um, congratulations again on everything y'all did at Battle Bowl. Number two. Um, so how, how do you feel it's gonna go? How many games is this gonna be? I can't tell, but you know, I'm hoping it'll be good. Hope it'll be good. Good outcome. What about you? I'm saying we're gonna win in six today. Win in six. Uh, the good part about the Vixen, the Vixen Tag Series is most of these are going six and seven. So y'all have been putting on a great show, and good luck to both y'all today. Thanks. Mr. Gillespie. That's right. Yep. I've been called better, and I've been called worse. It's all good. That's right. I guess. Testing. All right, we're going to try that again because yep. I'm not sure if that was heard on because I just talked to him a batterless mic. But I'm Gordon Pepper. I'm joined with the World Championship Series Southeast coordinator and all around swell human being, Ray Gillespie. Uh, yes, thank you, Gordon. I appreciate that introduction. I am not nearly as swell of a human being as he is, but I try to get by. Hey, that's all good. So a little bit on the rules momentarily. We are going to start this matchup. This is a tag team Vixens matchup. And if this is the first time that you're watching this, you're in for a treat. Tag team is fun. Tag team with Vixens Bowling is fun. Again, this is a best of seven matchup. Whoever wins four games first wins. Now, even though it's a tag team, here's how this works. There are two bowlers that bowl per game. Only one person can be bowling at any given time. There will be four, no more, no less, four tags per team. Whoever starts the mass match must finish the match and you cannot tag in the first three frames. You can tag in the middle of a frame, but then the person that tagged in must start and throw the first ball in the next frame. Get it, got it good. I will be explaining this momentarily again if you don't. And we are starting, I believe, with Daphne Smith bowling for the Savages and Tammy Bullen bowling for, Tammy Bullen, she's bowling. Her bullen is actually a last name for G-Town. Tracy Bullen. <laughs> there you go. And here we go with game one. All right, so for those who have seen us uh, on some other outlets before, um, Daphne Smith has been the longest uh, reigning Vixens champion in the South before. Uh, phenomenal bowler, uh, team owner of uh, the Spartanburg Savages. And um, She may come to get that belt again, you never know. Yeah. Yeah, she really enjoys the tag series. Um, we talked about it in the interview. Um, having a partner. Um, Daphne is one that uh, her and um, Casey uh, Parnell are, are now Pike since, since, since she got married. Um, and congratulations to Casey Parnell, a.k.a. Casey Pike and Turner Pike. Yep, oh yeah. The, um, we, had a, uh, we had conversations about, you know, getting more, more Vixens involved. And so we kind of, it was a joint effort, kind of brainstormed and came up with the Vixens Tag Team Series. Their cap is 410, they can't go over 410 between the two of them. Uh, and well, that, that means that you will not see Daphne and Casey bowling together because those are two female Vixens powerhouses. Right. And now that I've just said that, Daphne Smith throws a strike. Yeah, that's right. 
Lee Bolin, I'm sorry, not Lee, Tracy Bolin, no <laughs> slouch to the World Championship Series at all. She represented the South in the Vixens match over at Battle Bowl earlier on this year. So if she looks familiar, that's why. If Daphne looks familiar, she's also been part of the Vixens series for a while, that's why. We have two newcomers, and we'll talk about them once they tag in. They're gonna eventually have to tag in. Yep. Tracy Bullen right now, first shot, second frame. That ball looks good, a little catch up. No, type in. So talk to us a little bit about Tracy Bolin because you've seen her around and I believe that she was in the lineup for G-Town Heavy Hitters when they won Battle Ball. So talk to me a little bit yes, about her. Yes, she was. So uh, one of the obstacles for the South uh, in Battle Ball is always getting a lot of bowlers up uh, to there. So um, both uh, Complete Anarchy and G-Town Heavy Hitters, you know, didn't have as many uh, bowlers available of the bigger crowds. Uh, you know, there that some of the the, the closer teams did, and um, but I don't think that mattered. Tracy was going to bowl uh, regardless for them. Tracy has energy. She starts going. She starts yelling. She's a lot of uh, reminds me of Amanda Stone when it comes to just just that let's go. Like just she she's great with the energy. Um, uh, Casey was the Vixens champ at the time and was unable to attend Battle Bowl, and so Tracy even with them winning Battle Bowl and all the things they were doing that and brawls and everything they had going. She stepped up for me and uh, competed as the South rep in that North versus South match versus uh, versus Kelsey. So Tracy uh, during the during the Battle Bowl playoffs, Tracy Bowen by the way averaged a 223 during the playoffs. So she is definitely no slouch. She gets on the board with a strike for G-Town. Daphne Smith looking to double, and if she does that, Spartanburg Savages will have their first substantial lead in this match. For anybody just joining us, we just started. This is game one of our best of seven matchup between G-Town and Spartanburg Savages. Both teams with a litany of history and a litany of titles. G-Town right now, their most recent one, the Wilder Cup Battle Ball this year, there's a double for Daphne Smith. Now, let me explain how this works. Both teams have both three strikes, so now you can tag in if you want. Does not look like Daphne Smith wants, and there's no reason for her to at this point. She's got a double going into the fourth frame. Yeah, the, the, the best part about this tag team action is it's not it's not a, it's not a doubles match. It's it's tag team where you, you're going to have times where Daphne might stay in for six, seven frames because she's the one with the hot hand. Then you got to have times where she might not have the hot hand. And she's, you know, looking to tag out, you know, and you're going to see that in both both instances here. Yeah, you want to talk about hot hand, Daphne Smith, three in a row. And again, even though technically the 300s and the 290s wouldn't count in USBC play because there are two people bowling them, still nice to see. You wouldn't mind seeing a 290. No, and no, it's always good to see see the higher scores. Um, the, the thing that's going to be interesting in this match um, is when is how long Tracy's going to bowl because. Um, her her partner uh, Megan. This is her first action in WCS. You know, uh, Peyton has bowled with uh, Daphne before um, in some of their title defenses so far. So she's not new, but this Megan's going to be nervous. You know, well, so Megan is taking over for CJ Hudak, who yep. for health reasons cannot be here today. And yep. we are yep. wishing uh, CJ gets back in and gets back in quickly. So, yep. so good health to you from us over here at the Unholy Alliance. Right now, we've seen an unholy 10-pin left by Bolin. Yep. The, the shots are crisp. They're good pocket hits. The corner pins are just not carrying. Now, if I'm Lee Bolin, this is, I'm sorry, if I'm Tracy Bolin, oh, goodness, I'm going to confuse this all day. Obviously, Tracy and Lee are related. Yep. And I'm, I'm already going fantastic with the names. <laughs> but that's all now, right. if I'm Tracy, I make the tag, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're going to see Megan Smith first look at the lanes. Megan, a very good bowler in her own right. Ooh, that ball looks good. That's a very nice first start. Oh, uh, 10 pin. So same same outcome as Tracy. Uh, the lines look pretty similar from here. Um, but no, Megan's no slouch. Megan's a 190. Um, and so you see you got this quick first tag out the way early, which I, I think right now for Megan, the strategy is get her in a little bit. I'm not sure I completely agree with this strategy right now. If I'm 
Tracy, at this point, I want Megan to get a really good grasp of the lane conditions. Only tagging and letting her throw one ball is not really the way to do that. Yeah. Tracy's happy she's making corner pins. However, she's not making strikes. No, no, and it's not a nine pin, no tap uh, tag no, series. No, it is not. Um, but the, the good part is, see, I, I'm, I'm all for the strategy. I think you get Megan out there early. I'm not saying you concede the loss in game one, but I think it's like the quicker you get Megan comfortable, the the better she's going to be in the long run. Yeah, but I'm not sure one frame is comfortable. However, Daphne, very comfortable, four in a row. Yeah. Four in a row on that. And, and it's one of the reasons, I, again, they have to tag in two more times. So if I'm Tracy, and she's got to throw the first shot, by the way, yes. in the sixth frame, because she came in in mid-frame. But if I'm Tracy, I let Megan bowl a little bit. Yeah. Because game two, she's got, Megan's got to start game two, because Tracy's bowl game one. Yes. Yeah. So I want to get her set up. And I agree with you, you're not necessarily conceding game one, but you definitely want to get her game comfortable, because they can grab game two. Yeah. Daphne right now wants to grab f uh, five in a row. She doesn't like go. that no. shot. And there's a reason for it, 248. Now, if I'm Daphne, this is where I tag, even though she's not, to me, finish out the frame. Keep in mind, Spartanburg's got to tag four times. Right now, they haven't tagged at all, and they're right. running out of frames. Yeah. You do not want to lose a game that you're comfortable winning on because you screw up your tag count. And it doesn't matter how high or how well or how badly you are, if you do not get four tags in, you automatically lose the game. Yeah, that's correct. But I, I, I understand her not wanting to bring Peyton in right there because, you know, Peyton's first ball in the match, you don't want it to be where she misses a spare. You don't want to take any shots at the confidence right off the bat. So yeah. I, I'm fine with the way Tracy and Megan did it because, you know, Megan threw the nine count. Tracy's clearly shooting 10 pins very well. Um, yeah, but right now you're up 29 pins. Your opponent has a spare. So even if she misses, the worst that you could be up is up 20. And Daphne's got a line. Tracy finally gets a shot in. But see, it was a, it was a way to get Megan in to kind of ease ease that nerves, because they, they're going to know their nerves of their teammates more than oh, we sure. will. Oh, sure, absolutely. You know? So it might have been something they pre-discussed. I don't really know. but. You know, to me, it's a matter of now Tracy can bowl longer if need be. Um, you know, I would venture to say Peyton's going to come in next for uh, the Savages. But, you well, know. Well, right I, think, I think right now if Tracy does not get the strike here, make it to come in and pick up the spare. Yeah, if she, if she does, this becomes interesting. Let's see what Tracy does here. That ball looks good. Oh, she gets the mix. Now, all of a sudden, here's an interesting question. Who bowls the eighth frame? Oh. Now we know for Spartanburg, Peyton's bowling the seventh frame. Yeah. So let's see what happens here. Little bit, maybe a little bit of pressure coming in for Peyton, which is why I wanted to see her bowl the sixth frame and not necessarily the seventh. Because now all of a sudden, you may want to see a strike coming out here. There's Peyton. That ball's got to hurry on the cross. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, welcome to tag team, Mixon's tag team, Peyton. That looks no. great. No. And there's tag number one and two, <laughs> and we've got some butt tapping going on. We got, there, there's, there's going to be a lot of tags today, Gordon. Well, there better be at least, there better be no more than four and at least four. And if you're talking about tags on that particular area of the body, I don't think the views of Caffeine TV are going to mind that much. No. Just saying, Daphne, a, Daphne, eight frame right here, looking to double up. She does. Big double for yep. Daphne Smith. Any thought no. of G-Town getting back into this one may have gotten snuffed out at that moment. Yep. So it, they're set up where, you know, Peyton is obviously going to bowl the ninth. And Daphne will probably yep. let her bowl some of the tenth. Um, if they have it completely locked up. But now Megan's first shot on the right lane here will uh, will kind of tell the story on what their what their action is gonna be this game. There's Megan's shot right here. For them to stay in, he, she pretty much needs a strike. Oh, there okay, it is. Okay. And I don't know, they're looking to tag. I'm not sure I would tag right here. I may have kept her in the ninth frame. Clearly she's got a really good look on that right lane. Yeah, I mean. I'm not sure, I'm not really sure I agree with this strategy. Because right, right now, you're, it's only a 19-pin game. I mean, we'll see. Yes, Tracy did throw a shot over here, and it did look very good. 
We'll see what the strategy is. Of course, that's tag number four, which also means Tracy's in the rest of the way. No yes. more tags for G-Town. Ball looks good. That, oh, no. Mm. Well, that's game over, 7-10. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna go ahead and, and concede here, game one. Uh, the interesting part for this now is, like, their tags are now completely irrelevant. They're so done. if they really wanted to, um, they could have went ahead and let Megan come in and shoot this. They could have went ahead and... Um, well, what I would have done is I would have had Megan take that ninth frame, to be quite honest. Because, again, she... First ball out, she had the luck. There's clearly no butterflies there. And Tracy was on a lane. Yeah, she got a strike in the seventh frame, but she's been placking for most of the game. Yeah. I, that's, I'm not sure I agree with that strategy. However, the strategy of Peyton bowling here, yeah, this point I agree with, was sloppy, but it was a strike in the seventh. What you gonna do in the ninth? Oh! Yeah. So, so it seems early on, both teams have the strategy of their, uh, more experienced bowler, better bowler, however you really want to look at I'll it. I'll say more experienced. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say, based on the looks, I would not necessarily say better. Yeah. Maybe a higher average at this point, but not better on this game. Right. And so, you know, both of them were like, let's minimize our, oh, and that seven stayed up, wow. Um, you know, let's minimize, um, yeah. you know, minimize our, our, the tagging, our, our stuff tag. like that. Yeah, like it's. Yeah, the game, the game is out of hand, thanks to that open from G-Town. Spartanburg's going to win the first game as long as Daphne stays in and doesn't tag or do anything yeah. stupid. Clearly, she's not. She's still have, going up there with the ball. Best that G-Town best that G -Town can do, because we really haven't been discussing that, is 214. Daphne Smith and company already in the 220s. Oh, beautiful pickup. Yep. So Spartanburg will finish somewhere in the 240s at this point. And again, strategy, strategy, a lot of this. And this is one of the things that you were telling me before we had this matchup. One of the great things about tag is strategy. You can offset good bowling, bad bowling, good bowlers, bad bowlers, depending on who's got the look, where the line is. Yep. Yeah, you, yeah. Got, you, got a, you got a lot of things that factor in. You got a lefty, righty sometimes. You got a higher average, lower average. Sometimes you got people that just two, two about the same, you know, both a 205. Um, so, you know, there's strategies from the start of setting up the team all the way through finishing, winning winning four games in the match. Yep, and one thing that Daphne can say is she's rejoicing right now. They're definitely starting and winning game one. Yeah. Now, let's see what Tracy decides to do. Now, theoretically, and you're absolutely right here, the game is mathematically out. There is no reason why you could not tag in Megan at this point, have Megan get comfortable on lane four, even though she has been. Maybe right now it's Tracy trying to get comfortable with lane four. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, they haven't had to bowl together even as a tag team. So there's still some newness, you know, uh, for that as well on, on Tracy's, uh, Tracy's side of it as well. Because Tracy's only partner that she's had in the Vixens tag series it's been has, CJ. Been, has been CJ. So um, we'll see how this um, we'll see how this goes. And the, the the key here is game two. Megan and Peyton have to start, and Absolutely. they're going to they're going to have to go the first three. I think if you're based on the looks, and, and I know on paper Daphne is a higher average bowler than Tracy, and there's the tag that I would have probably would have liked to have seen one frame earlier. But your strategy coming in if you're G-Town, and Tracy is a very good bowler, but she's dealing with a Hall of Famer who is, as you've said, has held the Southeast Vixen title for the longest amount of times. Yes. So if you're G-Town, in your mind, you must win games two, four, and six, and force one of the women to make a mistake on one of the odd number games and try to steal one. It will not be this game. At the no. end of game one, Spartanburg Savages, 244, G-Town, 203. Savages are up one zip as your reigning champions. Now game two, the other side will start for G-Town. That means that Megan's gonna be starting. And then you got Peyton starting for Savages. Yeah, and the thing there is, uh, you know, for our viewers, it's just a reminder that like, yeah, G-Town exceeded their tag limit there. 
but it didn't matter yeah, because they already, lost the game. they already lost the game. So you'll see that at times where it, you know, you, you if you got somebody that needs a uh, that's going to start on that lane next, or that didn't have a good look there, they want to try a different ball on that lane. That's where all the strategy, and that's what makes the, the tag series so fun, is you get to mix in. And Daphne's calling for timeout. Oh, there we go. Daphne's calling for timeout. Apparently, the screens need a break. The screens are tired. They the need, a, they the, need uh, energy the drink. The screens are doing a tag team right now. All right. Screens are tagging out. We don't know who's tagging in yet, but the screens are tagging out. <laughs> So we will break momentarily. Yeah. So I'll so talk what? about, well, let me talk about this Vixen Stag series real quick. Okay. So the talk Vic, a little bit about that. Yeah, the Vixen Stag series um, is, uh, we're not even a year old yet. Um, we started um, January of last year and got enough, got 16 teams uh, in the South to get us started. And we were able to have a tournament and we crowned our first champions. Uh, at Mega Bowl, we took the final four to Mega Bowl, bowled that, worked it out. Um, unfortunately, uh, Peyton was unavailable um, to bowl at Mega Bowl, and so Daphne had to take a different partner. And Daphne also had to bowl um, the North versus South Vixens match there, and everything else. So Daphne was a little fatigued, a little tired. Now she won't, she'll probably never admit that, but you know she had she bowled a lot. Unfortunately, a lot they, of heavy lifting for Daphne. Yeah, unfortunately, they left. They lost in uh, six or seven. Um, but Peyton's been back. Um, they climbed back up. They've been the champs um, since they won them back, and they, they're doing very well. The the Vixen Tag Series has been very successful for the simple fact that you know the, the handicap is four. The cap is four ten. So it's allowing some of the lower average females that don't always get the bowl tour stops and pick the bowl events and all that stuff. It's giving them something to bowl and they really like it and enjoy it. And, and over 75% of the matches so far have went to game six or game seven. And you know what we like here, and I'll say the two word phrase of what we like, game yes. seven. Yes, game seven. We love game seven. We, we love also love to seven. see an actual match go on, and now yep. we finally got the screens yep. working. Yep, because we went ahead and took the A and the B out, and we got it to uh, say Savages and G-Town. So, All right, so they we are working in, well here. And now we are starting with the strike. So straighter is greater. And, um, Peyton has that, that league bowler um, straight ball shot. Uh, very, uh, down very well, I guess you could say. Yeah, based on what we've seen today so far, if you're gonna throw the ball out straight between second and third arrow, you're gonna get a lot of carry. If you score the ball out and hope the ball will come back in, you're somewhat getting carry sometimes. If sometimes you're not, it really depends on that carry. And it really depends on how good you are with messages. We're gonna see right now how good Megan Smith is in the first frame. And I... Now, if I'm G-Town, I needed that going in the opposite direction. Because right right now, you're already down game one. You don't need that. And no. that being a 4-6-7 from Megan Smith. No, but the good part is if you're going to have, you're going to throw a 4-6-7, do it in the first frame. That is true. You know, don't wait until you're on a three-bagger or, you know, trying to mount a comeback or keep a lead. Like, get it out of the way now. Um, you know, because, yeah, she didn't mow a lot the first game. So we, we don't really know what her nerves and stuff are yet. You know, she's a, a 190 bowler. Um, and so she's capable of making spares and making good shots, obviously, or she wouldn't be a 190 bowler. Well, we saw game one, she threw a bunch of strikes. Yeah, so every, threw, every time yeah. she was out there, this was the, that was not only her first open, that was the first time when she threw a ball, she didn't strike. So looking on is someone that is not from either G-Town or Spartanburg Savages, but a little bit of royalty here. Former world champion Dennis Kilo yep. starting on looking on at the match. That'll be fun. I'll be interested to get his thoughts. The thoughts I'm getting right now from Megan, that ball looks good. Ooh, Tempin. Yeah. Much better shot than yeah. she had in frame one, in my opinion. Yeah, much better shot there. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know if we'll be able to get a, get a word with him or not later, but. Yeah, Dennis has been is definitely royalty in the WCS world, uh, in the UBA world, um, and, the, and the thing with that, with this too, is, you know, he's friends, he's friends with the uh, with the Savages, friend, you know, friends with uh, Daphne and Nick, and so he's he's definitely cool with them. And then G Town, 
they're in the same district. They're in the Queen City with them. They are. Um, so. Uh oh. Uh -oh. So that that would be Timothy Evans throwing a gutter ball. Yeah, Timothy and, Evans. And you don't want to be throwing a gutter ball in WCS, or else it's going to get very, very loud and very, very rowdy. Ooh. So a 4 5 lead for, uh, for Peyton here. Oh, that's not the double the Savages wanted. That was definitely something that, no. that G Town definitely wanted, and you can even say needed. Because if you're G Town, you really want to be ahead or even, even tied if they tag up. Because again, you're looking at Hall of Famer Daphne Smith. I can't emphasize this enough. She already has a line in game one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, almost, almost made had despair. That one. Almost had that one. And based on that second frame, the first two frame look, you almost think Daphne is going to be coming in in the fourth frame. Yeah, I would expect. And sticking around for a while. Now, let me ask you this question in terms of tag team. Are you better off with a 230 and a 190 bowler, or are you better off with two 20 bowlers? Um, what do you I, think? I've seen both successful. Um, I'm currently on a tag team right now that is a, a, a 220 and a 208. Because um, our, our our series is a 430. Yeah, keep it. Um, yeah, I was gonna say keep in mind the men's cap is 430 versus right. the women's, which is 410. Um, so and I've seen we've got some of the big. We've got a couple teams that are like two of them at, at 180. And so really it comes down to the strategy. If one of your bowlers can get lined up. It can make the, the world a difference. Um, in this case, Megan and Tracy are kind of close, you know. So it's kind of both both options you were giving me there. They're close in average. Um, Daphne is definitely higher average, more higher average than Peyton. Uh, Daphne's at 227, I think, somewhere in there. So, you know, and Peyton is obviously less than that, so they can fit under the cap. So that's kind of. Both strategies will, will work. It's just a matter of you got to bowl. you got to show up and bowl. You know what I would like to see? And I say this as it looks like Megan is going to attempt to pick up the spare. I would love to see a, ta a team like Daphne and Casey. They can pour it on. They know how to throw strikes. I want to see them in a cap. I want to see them going up against the guys. And is she going to get the hit? No, she will not. So G-Town right now is done with their third frames. They can tag, and let, and Tracy tags in immediately. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Tracy doesn't do a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, but it, it's just a matter of when Megan feels comfortable and when she's bowling well, too. Because if you're not comfortable being up there, you're a detriment to the team. So hopefully they'll get it figured out. Well, then you're going to need to get it figured out relatively quickly. And that's one good way to get it figured out relatively go. quickly. First strike of game of game two. I'm hearing uh, some G-Town in the background. We had a lot of G-Town smackdown a couple of months ago over at Battle Bowl. Let's see if we can get some of that going on. Yep. Daphne does not want to have anything to do with G-Town smackdown. She wants Savage smackdown. Yeah. Daphne right now looking to increase the lead. Savage is already up by 14. Double here puts him up by 24. And then a couple of strikes here early, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on G-Town, who've already started two of their first four frames with opens. Smith right now looking to double up frame four. That ball looks good. Oh, uh, I was about to say it is. It is not. Seven pin. Yeah, you, so we, we got the G-Town SmackDown, and the Savages have the LFSU, uh -huh. which we're not gonna talk about what that stands no, for. No, no, we, um, we will not. You know, we're, we're PG-ish at the moment. The, the, the L, I believe, is Let's, yeah. and I'm not gonna discuss the F. You can use your imagination. Yeah. And uh, the S, I think, could be Suit, and the U could be Up, if I remember correctly. But she wants to smack down the seven pin. She will. There you go. Yeah. And by the way, if you're G Town, you need the match to go this way. If it is a carry contest, they lose. Daphne Smith wins. They're going to be out of there soon. If it's a I can't carry, G Town's going to have a shot at this one. Yeah. Because then it turns into spare making. Yeah. And maybe G Town can s squeak a strike or two out of it. Maybe get a little bit carry. Or hope that again on the tags they get marks to opens. So we, that that's the game plan here. But the game plan on G Town clearly has to be we need Daphne Smith to not carry and be Hall of Famer Daphne Smith. Speaking of which, here's Hall of Famer Daphne Smith, fifth frame. Yeah, they don't want to see that, and there it is. Nice try for Daphne. 
Yeah, Daphne is always going to be Hall of, Hall of Fame Daphne in my mind. Um, and and Tracy is, I, I, but I won't count Tracy out of anything until it's done. Oh, no, until, Tracy can carry. Tracy yeah. can absolutely carry. But we know what happens to Daphne Smith when they're on. Yeah. And if I'm Tracy, she needs to make, she needs to hope that Daphne is not on or find something like lane four that'll leave a seven pin or a 10 pin. And then right now, as Tracy's throwing the ball, she's gotta find some carry somewhere. She go. does not like that shot and there's a reason for it. Two, no, four, 10. She threw that out about five boards further right than it needed to go. And you can tell by her reaction, she knew it instantly. Yeah, that, that foot yeah. stop down said everything. Yeah, yeah and, and if you're gonna try to sneak an upset win against Daphne Smith, you cannot be doing that. Well, and one of the things, too, is um, both Daphne and Tracy have known each other for a while, too. Uh, some people, Ooh, like, they even reference um, mm -hmm. Daphne as being Tracy's mom. Um, it's kind of like a little thing between them. So they both kind of do that hand wheel in motion um, that we saw uh, the first game from Daphne, and then we just obviously saw there with Tracy. All right, so there's tag number two, Megan starting the sixth frame. There has been one tag for the Savages immediately in the fourth. This is now the second tag for G-Town. They've got to tag two more times. And that at fourth frame, Megan Smith will be bowling the rest of the match, or the rest of the game. Mm. And seven pin. Meanwhile, there is a Dennis Kilo within range sighting. And Dennis, as you're absolutely right, is currently chatting with Tracy Bowen. I have a little mini G-Town conference over here to the left of me. G-Town Dillagaff con conference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Megan's going to look to make the spare. That yeah, ball looks spare. like spare-worthy nice. to me, and it is. Yeah. A little bit of a deep breath there, a little ex exhale. She, she's still a little nervous, I think. Yeah, still a little nervous right now. <laughs> Savages are up by around 26. Yeah. So they're try to get they've, it. they've had one open versus G-Town's three. That's the difference in this game right now. If G-Town goes out the door to 202, Savages can go out for a 248. So this game has the potential to be fairly ugly should Daphne Smith decide that she can figure out lane four. Dennis has gone walking over to the other side. He's chatting with Dillacaf and some other people. Daphne Smith right now looking to take a sizable lead in game two. Savages have already that won game good. one. And yeah. that's the beginning of a sizable lead a double. That is the first double of the game from either team in this one. Going now, is she going to tag? Yes, she is. Yep. That is tag number two for Savages. Both teams have two tags left. Yep. Payton's coming up, and if she could throw another strike here, that would be huge for oh, Savages, no. but she's not because she's, oh. Oh, oh well, wait a minute. Yeah, that, uh -huh. I was about to say she's not because she's not gonna hit the head pin. However, that almost came, that almost boomeranged out there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that four pin was gonna knock them all out there. <laughs> it but, had an opportunity. Savages right now up by around 34 pins, assuming the spare is made. Yeah. In the seventh frame, three flames left to go. Yep. As long as she covers this. Payne will cover it. Yep, did it very, very good. Very nicely covered. Oh. So the, 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 another interesting part about this Savages tag team is um, they have relatives that were the uncapped tag <laughs> champions at one point. That is true. So you had uh, Daphne's husband, Nick, and uh, Payton's father, Ken, were the uh, Southeast yes yes. uncapped, tap, uh, uncapped tag champs for a while as well, so it's like, it, it runs in the family. It runs in the blood. It seems like the sportsmanship is not a blood feud here. All right, Megan's mm -hmm. out of trouble. Just a yeah. solitary six pin out there. However, even though I say out of trouble, at this point of the game, G-Town needs strikes. Yes. Spurs do them absolutely no good. It doesn't look like Spartan that these savages are gonna melt down. So you gotta find some strikes on the board. And right now it doesn't matter from which person they find the strikes from. They need it from some sort of source. Spares won't hurt. Got it, yeah, very nice. That one. So I'm gonna chat with Dennis momentarily. Hello, Mr. Kilo, how you doing? Good, good. I'm doing good. So I see that you're chatting strategy right now with G-Town. What strategy are you giving them? 
Well, I had I just started paying attention. But Tracy's on my uh, federation team, so I like to pay attention to what she does. So I'm trying to see what her stuff's doing, maybe make a recommendation here and there. That's not terrible nice. there. No, I definitely yeah, not terrible there. All the pins went down. Nice. Yeah, that's the object of the game. All right, so G-Town, if they go out the door, is a 191. Yep. If Savage is just those strikes that are Dutch, they go Dutch, it's a 196. So the only way the Savages get in themselves into trouble is if it's trouble of their own making. Yes, that is and, great. And, and your words, I will use your words because I like that, a.k.a. leaving opens. Or an improper tag. Now that is tag three over to Daphne Smith. Savages have got to make one more tag and make and yeah, he's got to make sure that Peyton throws the last ball. Right, all we got to do. Peyton's got to throw the last shot. Ooh, kick the ten out. Very nice. Both Savages and G Town have three hit three tags. So they just have to tag their original partners in, and the bowler that started the match has got to end it, or started the game has got to end it. Yep. In terms of technically ending this game, Daphne would love to do that right about now. A double will do that. A double will mean that they no longer have to throw any marks. Good count will be good enough, and that is assuming that G-Town goes out for 191. Yeah, that'll, that'll put it down. It, it, it'll make it a very tough for us to get to a scene of game seven for sure. Um, but right now, G Town's just worrying about getting getting a win and getting to uh, getting to the next game. Oh, well, let's see if she can end this game. Oh, that yeah. is a beautiful shot. Yeah. There is a reason why Daphne Smith is a Hall of Fame bowler, and and these past two games, almost two games, have shown you exactly why. Yeah. Daphne says, nah, upset Gordon, shut up. There's no upset. We're not giving up this game. We're up. Gordon, you can just keep your mouth shut. Good little commentator. Yeah. All right. So now they're going to be in uh, getting lined up for game three mode here. And that was a great shot right there for Tracy. Yeah, Tracy right now, she's now she's whatever Dennis has told her, that strategy seems to be working. Dennis says, that was not me. I was her teammates doing that. It's quite uh, G-Town's teammates going over and telling Leslie, okay, you gotta do this. I'm pretty sure she wishes she may have found that a couple of frames earlier. However, maybe she can get herself lined in. Make yeah, this a match. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's looking for, you gotta look, go ahead and look forward to the next game though. Yep. Um, so by the way, for the Savages, a nine out. We'll give them 194. Oh, that's there nice. Go. Got kicked the 10 out. Nine right. out will give them a 194, which will be better than the 191 maximum score that G-Town can give you. Yes. Obviously, if they make a mistake or leave the big four or go to the Church of the Episcopalian, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden G-Town's got a shot. Yeah. And so technically, that or mathematically, that game is not over yet. And we've seen strange things happen. We have seen strange things happen. Um, but the, the thing I like about what G-Town's doing right now is they want to make sure Tracy's good on this left lane because Tracy's going to start game three on this left lane. And she does so, look real good on that yeah, left lane. So now, just just in case something goes wrong for the Savages in game two, they're making sure that they're doing their tags right. And so Megan's going to come in to finish game two for yeah, G-Town and go from there. this game, even though we're assuming that game could be over, this game is not over. Again, a bad shot, a bad whatever. You know, this could be trouble. We'll have to find out. Now, the other interesting yeah, thing about go. this is keep this in mind, and I'm not going to be the person prognicating disaster. <coughs> Megan, I'm sorry, not Megan. Uh, Peyton's got to throw the last ball. Yes. So if Daphne makes a huge mistake, then all of a sudden Peyton's got to make the spare. This could be interesting. Now, eight is not good enough. Nine is what you're going to need. If she throws eight zero, they lose by a pin. Yep. So, nine count. That's a strike. For Savage to win. Strike, however, is always good almost everywhere. Yes. That is the best bowling currency you can find. Yeah, it, it's ten anywhere you go. <laughs> Dennis just yelled, you needed that last night. 
and Nathy's doing that. I'm, am I going to guess that she needed to do something yesterday which uh, did not live up to your expectations and preferences? We, we, call, we had a, the end pair down there, and it just played a lot different than what we were used to. We still got a good game, a good se team series. I think we're in fifth coming into today. That's pretty yep. good. Yeah, I think so she prefers the, the last side. Tag here. And yeah. now again, make sure that you got the correct tag in there. Here comes Payne for the last shot. And she and can that, throw it anywhere she wants to. She can throw she it in the can gutter. Do anything she wants. Yeah, well, you don't want to throw it in the gutter. But yes, technically, she, she can, can throw it in the butter. She can grab the, the gutter, it. the butter, the parquet, yeah. the margarine, the oil. Yeah. It does not matter. But that's a nice shot. Yeah. At the end of game two, Savage is 225, G-Town 191. Savages are up to zip, and yeah. they're making it look very easy at this moment. Yeah, so the first two games have kind of went the way I, I, I felt they would. Um, I feel like Megan is comfortable now. We got um, a different hairstyle now for uh, Tracy Bolin. So this might be like a rally cap kind of a thing where, um, yeah, let's let's do it. Well, you, you got to get it to 2-1. If, yeah. if you get it to 3, if, if Savages get it to 3-0, the chances of them losing four straight, not very good. So if you're G-Town, this is almost an automatic, we've got to win this one sort of game. That looks good. Yes, it does. That looked really good. There you go. We're starting to get a little energy now from Tracy. It's only going to get, it's only going to get louder. If G-Town can get the win, you better believe it's going to get louder. If they can win the game three, it's going to be very, very loud. And we could hear one of their trademark G-Town smackdowns. Well, see, we heard that a lot in Augustine, Delaware. At Battle Bowl, are we going to hear it again today? We're going to find out. Daphne Smith, first shot here, first frame. That ball looks, oh my oh goodness. goodness. Well, if you're a Hall of Fame bowler, you're going to get some breaks and some carries, and that's one of them. Woo. Yeah, she, she, I'll tell you what, she throws so many that are just flush all the time. And, you know, she, de she deserves some that aren't as good to fall for like that, and that. She's just great. I, like the I, LeBron James effect. You know, if you're that good, the refs will call for your direction. Uh, yeah. Basketball will bounce magically in, and in this case, a pencil fall. Yeah, and I mean, that pin would have stayed standing up and just slid across for anybody else, but it's Daphne. She's Daphne Smith. Yeah. So it's, it's like, Daphne. you know, hey, it's, it's going to fall. Sure, I'll go with that. So we're tied one strike apiece, going into frame two. If you just joined us, Savage are up to zip. Uh, I don't know about that ball. Ah, silly me, that's a strike. Uh oh, like she took a step like she was going to walk out something. I, I would love to see one of these ladies walk out a shot. Walk the shot down. I thought that was a little bit too outside. Nope, that ball comes hooking back viciously. So, Tracy Bowen, no problems on lane three. Now the question becomes, did the team coach her correctly on lane four? Because if she did, Daphne once again is going to take a quick lead in this match. Or in this game, I should say. They already have a lead in the match. Bowling right now. That ball's got to hurry in, but it does look good. Oh, no. Uh, Tempo. That is a good shot. Yeah, it was a great shot. It, it damn 10 just didn't want to go down for a little ring there. But it's okay. Tempin just said, eh, no. Yeah. I'm hanging out. I like it up here. Yeah, Tracy just goes, Tracy's got to stay in herself. She stays in herself. She's going to be fine. Um, well, you're, think, you're saying she's going to be fine. I think her issue is that Daphne has been more than fine. But you're right. Tracy's got to make this. She does. Well, and you got to remember, too, that, you know, the tags and when they tag and how, the, you know, all that. There's so much of that that can take a good start and, and throw it in the toilet. You know, if you don't tag properly, you don't tag at the right time. And, you know, because singles action, all you gotta do is worry about yourself and your ball changes. And tag, it's completely different. Yeah. Um, Tracy's got um, G-Town people here to kind of guide her through a lot of that stuff. And then the Savages on the same side, you know, both of the, the former uncapped champs that are here, they both run pro shops. So sure. they know a lot about holding balls and all that kind of stuff too. And that was a great shot from Tracy right there. Beautiful shot from Tracy. Tracy's got to figure out lane four. 
and what they really need right now is a seven pin or a 10 pin or anything hanging out for Daphne in the third frame. You're absolutely right, she will be okay, but she needs Daphne to be in range so that when she does leave that seven pin or, or one pin spur, or if she does have to tag, they're within range to take advantage. Because you can easily see Daphne Smith for the front seven, tag frame eight, tag frame nine, tag frame 10 and the other tag. And if you're not within range in the first seven, then it really doesn't matter what you do. Yeah, that's good. That's great, Gordon. So they got to stay within range and they have to hope that Daphne does not get into one of those patented Daphne Smith runs. And there's one of those patented Daphne Smith runs. That is a third frame. She can tag if she wants. I'll guarantee you she will not. No, they'll try to make a run at uh, striking as many times as they can. Um, if, if, if they won't tag out, if, if, as long as Daphne's striking, they won't tag out until they absolutely No chance. To. Yeah, you're absolutely right. No, no chance. That that fourth frame is going to be very huge early for Miss Bolin. Tracy's got to shoot. If she doesn't, again, it's going to be late early in the fourth frame because right now Daphne looks absolutely lined in. And you're right, they do have to tag twice, but the game could be so far out of reach at that point, it will not matter. That's correct. Savages right now, already up game, two games to none, and already up at least 20 pins. At least over 10, possibly 20 right now, going into the fourth frame. Here comes Anthony Smith. And we're, we're having some people over next to me, at least one person saying something that hopefully will not hit this microphone. And there's a Snappy Smith one, four in a row. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, if you're Tracy Bullen, this almost needs to be a strike. And it's crazy that I'm saying this. That needs to be a strike in the fourth frame. Yes. Well, it, and you know, it's all about that hand bone, too. I like it. And once again, over here in Myrtle Beach, I'm hearing that steak and that meat is delicious. Yes. I actually had a double cheeseburger here. Um, she needs to have a double cheeseburger here, or else that food may be coming out well done. Yeah, it should. Once she starts getting the 10 out, she's going to be fine. Well, again, the question That's is, better. is she going to be fine now? That's a better oh, shot. Another 10 man. pin. Yeah, 10 pin again. And I'm saying nothing. Keep this in mind for the Georgetown, for the G-Town fans. I'm saying nothing bad about G-Town at all. And I'm saying nothing bad about Tracy. She is a great bowler. But the problem with two flak tempins in the second and fourth frame means you're looking at at least a 40 pin deficit when it comes to Daphne Smith. Yeah. Tracy Mike to spare, going to the fifth frame. Getting close to the second half of game three. Yeah, but the good part is even even with the two flats, the two flat tens there on the right side, that she's sparing them. And she that, is and, that, and, and she's not letting it throw her off. She's been able to come back on the next lane and throw a strike. That is and true. That's, and that's what, uh, that's what you want to see. That's what good bowlers do. Yeah, well, yes. you're absolutely right there. The last thing that you want is to see somebody melt down, give up, miss up, because you're right. They do eventually have to tag. Oh, that ball up. Oh, she hey. gets a 10 pin. <laughs> Finally get a 10 pin go down. So you, you saw the frustration on Tracy there. She was like, she just threw it. Thought she threw it out the window. It was going to be terrible. It came back. It hooked. Um, one of the G-Town guys, I don't know if that was Jack or Matt, wanted it to hook. It hooked. You know, got the 10 yep. to get kicked out there, too. So um, we're still in Absol the Dutch pace there, but we're still in that 300 pace here for uh, Savage. Well, and, and the good news is, if you're G-Town, you do have it sort of within range. <coughs> so that if Daphne does make a mistake, they can get themselves right back into this. However, Daphne needs to make a mistake in order for that to happen. Right now, she looks oh, locked. Let's see if she makes one here in the fifth frame. Fifth ball, that ball looks locked to me. Oh, oh well, there's that mistake that we're talking about. Uh-oh. Well, now all of a sudden, now it becomes interesting. And now this is one of the reasons why, as you said, you need to be close enough. 
Yeah, you just got to make making them you can, be, you can be as locked as you want. All of a sudden, a Greek church comes up. Yep. And Daphne's got to be a little bit lucky or feeling lucky that that did not show up in the 10th frame of game two. Yes. Because if it did, we're tied one game apiece at this point. Yep. Time, timing is everything. And these and tag matches are just, it's, it's amplified. Absolutely. And then I'm not sure why she went for the two versus the uh, versus the three there, but um, and that, here's tag number one. Yep. First tag coming up for Peyton. Now keep in mind this: Peyton has got to throw two balls here within the next five frames. Now can she pick it up? Oh, five pin. And we're all raising a right hand. She pains like that. Nah, nah, nah. so, now, Peyton, if you really want, you can tag Daphne and oh. And she did exactly that. She's going to tag Daphne in. That's so nice of her. Now, now of course, this makes it real interesting. Yeah, so as it's custom in bowling leagues, and it definitely in what, what's gonna Now, what's going to happen here if, Meg, if Megan, if Daphne misses a five pin? Um, so Besides I, all chaos breaking loose at this point. It, 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 yeah. I, I've never. I oh, wanted the hook. That's not hooking. Uh, boo. <laughs> boo. Now, as that much as we're booing here, here's the important point. And, and let's underline this here as now we finally get finally get our first tag in on that side. Megan's coming in. A double. If Megan goes a strike here, G-Town will take the lead in yep. this game. Yep. So let's not forget that, thanks to the Greek Church. Here's that ball. That ball's that coming up. Look for the strike. Yeah. There it is. There you go. Oh, this is... Not only are they not done, all of a sudden G-Town's got the lead in this game. Yeah, wow. So how quickly the tides have turned in, and you pretty much called it. They're making their marks. They stay within range, waiting yeah. for the mistake. The mistake yep. happened, and all of a sudden G-Town, and, and this is again Gordon, the kiss of death, saying that Daphne looked locked. Ha ha. Yep. Green shirt proved me wrong. Ha ha ha. Now, if Tracy throws a strike here, and she hasn't missed yet on this lane in game three, and she's not yeah. going to miss now. There we go. Now all, all right, of a sudden, G Town yeah. not only has a lead. There we go. It's uh, G Town that's up by let's 41, right. and this is exactly what G Town needed to do. They needed Daphne Smith to play catch up, and they needed to put some pressure on. And again, you got to remember something. Megan's got to come back in sometime. Yes. Yeah, Megan. Megan's got to get back in. Um, you know. It, but the, the thing is, we've seen where the strategies, and that's what I love about the, the tag team, is the, the strategy of when to tag. You know, it was it was big for Daphne to come in and shoot that five pin. Oh, and that trip's um, over. Yeah. Keep in mind, last time she was there, she had the Greek church. That ball was a little high. She may not have liked it. Now, what is she going to do here? Here's the interesting thing. Does she try to get the double in frame eight, or does she tag her opponent? I'm sorry, does she tag her partner and hoping that she can throw a double? What is the strategy here? Um, and they're kind of uh, consulting what is she with Kenny do? here at the moment. Interesting. Now they're chatting here. Strategy, strategy now. Keep in mind, Savages, for the first time in this match, are trailing by double digits. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, right so now it, they're it, looking at being down 11 pins at this point. Yeah, it's a little bit of a unfamiliar territory so far in this match. It is, it is. All right, they said that's an interesting strategy. What they're saying is Daphne try to get the double on lane eight and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. And they try to get the double and then hope that Leslie and Megan stop striking. Now, obviously, if this is not a strike, the strategy backfires yeah. on Spartanburg. Let's see what happens here. Big shot here, and all of a sudden, Daphne's got some pressure going on, eighth frame. That ball looks good, and buried, and the tempo goes down. Yeah. The strategy right now, sort of successful. Keep in mind, again, Megan's got, I'm sorry, Peyton's got to come back in. Yes. Yeah, uh, Peyton, I'm, I'm pretty sure Peyton's going to throw the first ball in the ninth, and then they'll go from there. Um, we'll take it from there right now. Yeah. 
Megan coming in. This is Tag. Still on Tag number. Actually, no, that's Tag number four. Because Leslie threw it over there. That ball's got to go. It does. I'm sorry, wait, I'm sorry, no, wrong. I'm sorry, that was tag three, not tag four. This is tag number four. This is This is game three. This is tag number four. Leslie's finishing out, I'm sorry, Tracy's finishing out the rest of the way. And they're sticking Leslie once again, I'm sorry, they're sticking Tracy once again on that lane. That looks good, and it is. Yeah, there you go. Five in a row for G-Town. Now, you remember about that strategy. Peyton's got to come in now. They still need a tag. They're figuring now's the time to stick Peyton in. Yeah. Now, in order for them to keep Brown here and not fall down by more than 11, Peyton's got to throw strike. Yep. Peyton's got to carry that ball. Looks, that looks good, good to me. That's why yep. it's there. Still an 11 pin game. So Now, yep. we know that Tracy's finishing out in the 10th frame on lane four, which is not exactly the lane she's in love with. That is tag four on the other side. Yep. So now it is Daphne versus Tracy the rest of the way. Yeah, we're, we're, done, we're done with tag now. So this yep, is, this is where it's now going to come down to bowler versus bowler, 10th frame. Um, and it's going to be Daphne's got to put pressure on Tracy. Absolutely. So Tracy needs, if Daphne goes out the door, Tracy needs a double to shut Daphne out. First shot here. It's gonna, Daphne going to put some pressure. Mm, but oh, four pin. Left the four. And, and all of a sudden, now again, if Daphne makes this, Tracy is not completely out of the woods yet. No. Because assuming that Daphne makes this, Tracy does have to mark. Yeah, and, and again, assuming that assuming that you have count here. Yeah, that, that was a wasted opportunity there from Peyton to, uh, for uh, excuse me for Daphne. Yeah. To put pressure on Tracy because not only would have been pressure on the on the game, but Savage is already up 2-0, and yep. G Town does not want to go down 3-0. Nope. Now, there's still a chance for a tie here. If Nathalie throws a strike, Tracy goes, actually, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm absolutely wrong there because they're on a double, not in a single. Yep. No, if Tracy strikes, if, sorry, if Daphne strikes here, Leslie's got to throw a mark. I'm sorry, Tracy's got to throw a mark. Yeah. My, my Leslie Tracy thing today, no bueno. No, Eventually, I'm going to get names right sometime today in South Carolina. It's that uh, team no sleep there, Gordon. Nah, unfortunately, I got sleep. Maybe that's a problem. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Okay, Daphne. This is the person that I, whose name I haven't gotten wrong all day today. Got 228. See, I'm going to I'm sorry, 227. So 987 this time around. This time around, I am correct. 9 0 could be tie. And Tracy's going to hang out here. Tracy's not going to throw a 300. A strike here, however, and G Town gets on the board. Yes. I do think, though, that G-Town will be celebrating with brewskis if she gets the first hit here. Yes. Strike here, G-Town's on the board. Nine count makes it, G-Town's on the board. Anything less than a nine, spear must be made. Money. And there's a strike, and G-Town's on the board. See, I, I was worried about putting a jinx on her. I didn't want to say it because she has not thrown less than a nine count yet. Offers have been nine or well, better. And in this case, that streak continues. Yeah, that did it right there, so. Well, at least uh, in this game anyway, it's been nine or better. At the beginning, it was not nine or better. Right. She had a couple of pitfalls, but <laughs> she's locked in now. And all of a sudden, we've got ourselves a little bit of a match here. Oh, yeah. Because I think, again, being being down two to one is not nearly as bad as being down three zip. No, you're putting the momentum back, and Peyton has the start game for, for the Savages. So you're going to kind of put pressure on 
you Peyton know, and Megan. On, on Peyton there. And, now and she needs the 10 pin, except it doesn't matter. The game's out. Yep, this is yep, this is done. So we're, we're going to be 2-1 Savages headed to game four. All right. Doesn't really matter what I call her. If it's Tracy, Leslie, Lee, the important thing is she got the strike in the 10th frame. And Tracy's going to finish out with the spare here in the fourth frame. And now she won't. But again, doesn't matter. At the end of game three, G Town 248, Spartanburg 227. Deficit is cut two to one. Savages still winning, and Savages have got to start game four. That means Peyton's going to be throwing three, and Megan's going to be throwing three, and then we'll see what the strategy is at this point. If you just joined us, thinking that this is going to be a runaway, it ain't. If you went out, got a pizza after game two, and came back, G-Town got on the board. Maybe it's your fault. Nah, it's probably not your fault. I don't know whose fault it could be. There are many people watching this. But, as we say, it doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you finish. Spartanburg won the first two. If G-Town has won the third, if they win the next three, they're your new Vixen's Tag Team Champions. Now we're going to see what's going on here. Everybody is sort of regrouping. G-Town is hanging out. Spartanburg is taking a little bit of a break. Everybody's regrouping. The G-Town coalition that was here, they're all gone, so they're probably going out regrouping right now as we chat. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes, yeah, somebody shot a 300. So everybody, so, so explain the rules to me over here while we're waiting. What exactly is going on here? If uh, you shoot a 300 game, they, they open the bar up for 30 minutes for $3 domestics and $3 mixed drinks. Uh, so all three dollar, all mixed drinks, three bucks. And if you have a ten dollar mixed drink, it's now three bucks. Yep. So basically, there is now a beeline at the bar, and I'm gonna look over here at the bar just to see. And yeah, sure enough, everybody's having their brewskis on. They all get the brewskis. Certain people are coming out with the brewskis. It looks very, very long. Lines there. Uh, now I'm just curious as to did Smash get? It doesn't look like Smash got any brewskis. Smash, it does not seem you're on that line to get brewski, so I'm glad you're not drinking on the job, sir. No, no, I was not. Because that, be, that would be against UBA protocol if you're drinking on the job. Right. Yeah, I, I, I know better. I wouldn't do that. Now we are going to start with Megan over Brooklyn, here. Brooklyn. Oh, my goodness. That looks good. All right. Doesn't matter how they fall as long as they fall. Yeah. So that's considered a Brooklyn, even though we're in South Carolina, and Brooklyn is over 600 miles away from us. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. It's still, it's still a Brooklyn, but I forgot about what it looked like already. It was a strike on the screen. That's all that matters. Our uh, camera guy, Tony Anthony Nieves, is from Brooklyn. If I, if I, uh, Brooklyn or Long Island now? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see, nod your head. Uh, it's Brooklyn. And, well, Brooklyn better, I guess, is smack in the pocket, 10 pin. Yeah, that was a good shot. It, Very they, good shot for Megan. They're flat tending like crazy. And we got candy. We not only have a booze break, we have a candy break. Because apparently chocolate goes really well with alcoholic beverages. And what also really goes well is a spare. That's right. Megan was a little bit concerned about that. She had it, no problem. We are tied, 10 apiece, going into frame two. No, it's like it's like I said last game, Gordon, like, yeah, Daphne can be intimidating, Daphne's gonna strike a lot, but then she's she's gonna have frames where she misses. So they did a great job last game of making their spares, staying in it, waiting until either Daphne or Peyton made a mistake. Which, which did happen, you had the Greek church, and yeah. that, was, that was the catalyst, and G-Town went from close to 40 down to up 11, and that gave them game three. Light. Ah, oh, gets out of bit. trouble there. Okay. Five pin goes down. Okay. And you saw something from G-Town that you would expect to see from Savages, which is a huge lit line of strikes. So now we know that G-Town is capable of stringing them up together. And more importantly, they've done it recently. So they're capable of stringing them up on this pair. Yeah, it's like I said that you know, the energy that Tracy Baldwin has, when she starts going, she is so much like Amanda Stone when it comes to just being amped, keeping your team fired up, and whether she's on or off the lane, she's always that way. And 
she was able to do it there in the, on, on lane three. She crushed it. They got through their tags. Tracy did exactly what she was supposed to do. And I've been impressed with Megan. Like, you know, she's a little nervous to start, but she's been in. She's throwing it consistent. You know, she's making spares. Like, she's not making dumb decisions. Like, she's doing great. And this is this is very good. She she might not she might have to try to talk CJ out of not coming back so she can stay in it. <laughs> or maybe she can add to the series too when we get another team out of G-Town. I, I have no problem with more than one yeah, team coming out of no, G-Town. No, not at all. Now keep in mind we have had women's teams from G-Town win the men's version of the tag team titles as well. Keep that in mind. We've had a heaven this combination. So so we've had that once upon a time. So and Heather Ness is still on G-Town. So I wouldn't mind seeing her showing up in the Vincent's Hacking Series. Right now, we're seeing a pink make a spare. She does. Yeah, she does. Yeah, so I hate that you brought up them because um, so it was, I believe, two years ago when um, I was up, I was up 3-0 in the Cap Tag Series uh, to against G-Town, against uh, Tracy and Heather. And needless to say, they Oops. advanced and we didn't. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. I appreciate it, Gordon. No, no problem. Anytime, buddy. <laughs> Peyton that's right now looking to finish this out on Blemish. He does. Strike from Peyton. Now we're going to see whether or not Bartenberg is going to be tagging over to Daphne momentarily. Megan's going to finish out her third frame. For G Town. Right now, we have a one pin lead. Yeah. Over to Savages. Here comes Megan. That ball looks decent Ooh. to me. Out of trouble. Okay. Six nine pin. pin. Nine pin. Oh, I'm sorry, nine count. Six pin. Yes, nine count to six pin up there. Yeah, but it, the good, the, I'm, I'm telling you, man, these girls in their spare shooting. Um, it's been really good today. No, both 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 teams, and it's something to be proud of of uh, the Vixen Bowlers that we have, the ladies we have in WCS and in the UBA. Yeah, it took um, G-Town a, a little while to wake up after game one. It sort of looked like ah, they started to get in the other game two, and they really put it together game three. Yeah, I was kind of I was kind of thinking they were going to get to get to where they let um, uh, they let Megan bowl a little bit more. Um, love it, staying a little bit longer, but no, nah, I wouldn't. Uh, if, this if Tracy's is Tracy's feeling it. Let it go. Yeah, this is Tracy's lane. Tracy's been on their lane three. It wouldn't shock me if they burnt out their tags early, depending on what Daphne and Spartanburg does. If they want to take this one and get it out of the way. Oh. And of course, the second that I say that, we have a seven ten. Right. Want, 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 want. Gordon stinks. Want, want, want. Yeah. Barry leaves seven ten. Want, want, want. Yeah, he did that for uh, for Tracy there. It was Gosh, a really good dang ball. It, Gordon. It was a really good ball. It was a little in, but got the seven here. Yeah, that strategy backfired a little bit. Yeah. Now, if I am savages, I tag Daphne in because I want to put a lot of pressure on G Town early, and that's exactly what's going on. I mean, yes, this is the same lane that she was a little bit uneasy and she threw the Greek church. However, Daphne being Daphne, you would think that that will not be happening again. If you're G-Town right now, you don't mind a mark as long as it does not come in the form of a strike. Because two strikes, you're looking down the barrel of a 35-pin deficit. And if you're G-Town, you just got back into the game in game three. You're all, you are down, but you're only down 2-1. You don't want to be down 3-1. to one. Want to try to get, get this match tied up two games apiece. Daphne Smith, however, may have something to say about that, and she does. Double for Daphne Smith, and here come the Savages. Yeah, um, Daphne's going to... She's She doesn't make back-to-back -back mistakes. Um, I mean, she threw that ball so good that the 7-pin didn't even come in the next rack over there. And so it's, Daphne doesn't go Greek church, Greek church. She doesn't, like, she she's, forgets her bad shots very quickly and moves on. And that's what she's known for, that's what she's just great at. 
fifth frame. Here comes Daphne again. There it is. There you go. I think we're going to be seeing Daphne for a very long time in this game. And as I mentioned, Savage is now up by 35 and they're threatening to go up by four. Now Leslie's got a decision to make. I'm sorry, Tracy's got a decision to make. I'm going to keep calling her Leslie, aren't I? Good job. Yeah. Tracy's got a decision to make here in the fifth frame. You're pointing, what exactly are you pointing at, right? No, I'm trying to just hit the reset button on the thing. It may not, might not be working. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to get a full rack. Really? All right, I think that's what they're staring at right now. I think that's what they're waiting on. I think they're waiting for it to reset. I think Tracy's well aware of it. Yeah, no, Tracy, Tracy's aware. I just tried to get it. The buttons won't score here, it, but it, it usually rack. Maybe this pair is not working, whatever. There we go. So I, I, I At least now it gives Tracy a chance to recollect and reset and to think of thoughts and to throw a really good shot here. Because right now, G-Town needs a really good shot to start getting them sparked and getting them going. Yeah, I feel bad for Tracy right there because I hate to sit there and be up and ready to come in and redeem. And then you got to sit and wait on a re-rack. Like, it's, it's annoying. Um, but... Maybe a good thing for her in this point, it, it, because again, it, it, she just she just saw a 7-10. So now she's got to recalibrate here and think of what she's going to do. Let's see if it did help her. That was no, a good ball, let's attempt it. Yeah, the, the flat 10s are just, are killing them. Bowling right I, now, looking at the tempin. Yeah, I, I, I hate it for him. Well, as you said, game four, you needed, I'm sorry, game three, you needed G-Town to stay within range, and they were game three, and they're starting to not be in game four. Yeah. Since attack coming up, there's tag number two, they got two more to go. Yeah, I mean. The I, best I, that G-Town can do at this point, 235 as we go into the second half of game four. I'm sorry, second half of game four, Savage is 280. Okay, comes That's Megan, ball that ball Megan. is, that is a good ball, that's good. There you go. And if oh. I'm Tracy, I need Megan to stick around because right now it's clear, Megan's got the better look as of yeah. right now. Sorry. Yeah, so Daphne's working on a, a three in a row for the team, a personal double here. Yeah, if she, if she throws a double, it's gonna be very, very close to being over for Savages. G-Town needs her to throw another Greek church and they need it sooner rather than later. That's good. Yes, it is. Yep. Four in a row. And now all of a sudden, instead of one Greek church, they may need a choir of Greek churches. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're, and I don't see that happening. No, nah, Daphne's uh, knowledge of her game in, in just the game of bowling it, itself is very impressive. You could probably not even, you could, once she lets go of the ball, you can watch her reaction and be, and be able to tell if it was a good shot or not. Like if you, if she's confident, it's 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 a strike. It's her her body language, her her emotion on her shot. You don't even need to worry about watching the pins go. You put a curtain up, and we wouldn't even be able to. Yeah, and it's clear that they're keeping her in the seventh for the kill shot here. Yeah. Because they want to end this one in game four. They want to end this game now. That's five in a row. Yep. They still need to make three tags, so I'm expecting a lot of tags here going on the eighth, ninth, and tenth. However, it may it may not matter what G-Town does at this point. No, because they're, what, 235 max at this point and, um, you know, 280 for uh, Savages. So it's going to be tough, um, yeah. this one. But it's a, definitely a good decision to leave Megan in here. You got to keep Megan in right now. She's got the better look. Seventh frame coming up. She may not have the better look early, but she certainly there has it now. There's a double. Yeah, it's a double for Megan. Uh, she hasn't been able to bowl back-to-back -back frames, so. Um, yeah, I, and now they're putting Tracy back in, and I understand why you want to put her back in now. Despite the fact that she's 7-10 seven, seven, on lane three, this has been the lane that she's gotten the better look on. Yeah, and I think in a way, you, you, I, I, feel, I feel like they've conceded this game. Um, they're not expecting uh, Daphne and Peyton to leave the door open again. And you're already down 40-some pins. Like, you, you might as well make sure you're good for game five. It might be a frame too early, but we'll see. I don't think it's a frame too early. Yeah. 
No, no, no I, I do think Tracy shooting that stop means, hey, we're still here. Yeah. You know, again, yes, it is not very likely they're going to screw up, but if they do, and then keep in mind, they still may, uh, Daphne still has to tag Peyton in. Yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you, the, 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 all four of these ladies are be, being very impressive. Uh, they're making great quality shots. Here's um, Peyton here, frame eight. Bet, so D Peyton is the best lefty on the pair. Yeah, man, none of that strategy really needs to matter if you do that. No. If all the ten pins, if all ten pins go down, it doesn't matter. And this is the third time this match that she's gotten a can of corn out of it. Yeah. And again, it doesn't matter. All that matters is, hey, six in a row. Yeah. And if Daphne goes, hey, seven in a row, this game will be mathematically over. Yep. Daphne yeah. here, and by the way, there's another one. Yeah. She, she had a little bit of a wheel motion with her hand. She didn't think it was that great, but it struck. And that's all that matters. Yeah, that, 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 as they say, is that. Leslie's going to come in. Again, tag three. She sort of has to at this one. Actually, she's staying in for tag three, I should say, because she already tagged out in the eighth frame. Yeah, so all that Megan's got to throw. Megan has to throw the last shot. Yeah, all know. that needs to happen is Megan throwing the last shot and then Peyton throwing the last shot. Yeah. But yeah, the, the G10 tags right now are irrelevant in this game. Um, this, this this game is over. It's just a matter of getting, you know, making sure they're good for the next one. And so it looks like they're going to let Megan go ahead and finish all three on the left. So yeah, I mean, the one thing they need to hope for is somehow Daphne forgets that she is not supposed to end this game and she accidentally throws a couple of shots. That would be the only thing that would bail them out at this point. If they go out the door, it's 235. Uh, that would be G-Town. Good ball. And uh, they're not going to do yeah. that. Now the game really is mathematically over. Yeah. Savages yeah. could theoretically screw this up. Only with the tags. But only at this point, the only way they can screw it up is with yeah. the tag. Because they will not have to worry about the score. Tracy Knight now will make the spare. Sorry, not Tracy Megan. Now Tracy's gonna go, well, are they gonna go in now? Megan's gonna finish this one out. So Megan got in the bag, got another ball here. Just, it's all about being ready for the next one. Total pinfall is uh, completely irrelevant. They have to be ready for the next game have because be, they yep. must win the next game. Yep. 2-13 for G-Town. Yep. I, I do get kind of surprised sometimes and wonder if it's trying to put your your foot on the neck or like what you're trying to do, but this game's over. Um, and yeah, Peyton if I'm has to Daphne, throw I'm not going anywhere near that ball return. I'm yeah. telling Peyton, you bowl the whole tenth frame yeah. because you never know. The brain may not mental mechanically pick it up, and then you may accidentally throw a shot. Well, and then all of a sudden you lose. Yeah, and. You know, I'm pretty sure that between uh, Nick and Ken being in attendance, that one of them would tackle her if she tried to throw the last ball in the uh, in the tent. But I, I just I don't know why they just not let Peyton get the reps. You know, I've it, seen it's it happen over. in title matches where you brain fart. Yeah. And there's been a number of times, even in title matches, where in game one, and I remember this, that you're in a match between loose cannons and Bufu. And it was a title match, and game one, the challengers did not tag correctly, even though they had the game won, and they lost, and then that just snowballed, and they got swept. See, it never happened. Here comes Peyton. All right, so I think, I think the, the bet here, Gordon, would be, is Peyton going to hit the right pocket or the left pocket? All right, it, will it even matter what pocket she hits the ball in? No, I mean, it... it, it I mean, she could put her hands in her pockets and for her, really yeah. on this one. Um, Theoretically, she could put her hands in the pocket and then try to carry the ball that way. It would be really an interesting spectacle to see. The answer is it doesn't matter which pocket. No, At the end of game four. Matter.
Nice, 280. Farmer Savages, 280. G Town, 213. Savages are up three games to one. The margin of error for G Town is zero, AKA El Chipo. There's three games left in the match, and G Town must win all of them. If not, Spartanburg retains the titles. Yep. But I tell you, I, 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 G Town is such a, a solid team. Tracy is such a solid bowler. I, I, I can't count it, uh, them out until the fat lady sings, so to speak, and I don't see no fat ladies. So, well, G-Town um, G already won one game. There's no reason why they can't win two. It's yeah, not like you're down 3-0. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're down 3-1. You already shown that you can win a game. There's no reason why you can't win two. And then there's no reason why you can't win three. And then there's no reason why you can't win four. That, however, is not a good start. Yeah, we're going golfing. Yeah, I, I think Leslie, I'm sorry, Tracy forgot what the sport is. Yeah, that's not the... Tracy's going golfing. Yeah, not not good. No, that was not the spot, the start that she needed. Once again, you're giving Savages the lead early. And that usually does not work out for her well, it. even though she almost had a shot to spare. 44, it's a great frame. Okay, but it only counts late. 44 is good for a round of golf, unless it's mini golf. It is not good for a round of bowling. Yeah. Nick Smith hanging out right now, watching Daphne Bowl. And we have the good luck double fanny snap right there. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's... It's entertaining, but I've seen where that gets a little out of hand, too, where there have been some hurt hands before, so well, we don't need any injuries in yeah, Well, point. no, you do not want to have wrist injuries and not wrist injuries doing that, because right. that's a little bit embarrassing. How'd you sprain your wrist? Yeah, exactly. Well, I was high-fiving my opponent. You mean too hard? No, <laughs> I. let's not discuss it. Yeah. Daphne wouldn't mind discussing her strike, though. Once again, Savages with a quick lead. I get tired of talking about Daphne's strikes, though. She strikes too much. She strikes all the time, so, everywhere. We, it was much more entertaining for at least G-Town to see her through the Greek church, then, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I know you want to see game seven. I'm not necessarily sure we're getting that today. Right, you know, yeah, I not love game seven. For, for this one. I love game sevens. Um, I pretty much spent last year, um, while Daphne was defending the Vixens title, following her around the Southeast, um, you know, uh, you know, commentating, interviewing, uh, just spectating. Like, she strikes a lot. She strikes a go. lot. There's another one. Yeah. Striking doesn't get old. No. It does not. And this, you know, I said before earlier, it's getting her, it's getting late in the fourth frame and maybe getting late in the second frame. Yeah. Because Daphne, with the exception of that one, what the heck was that that cost in game three? Daphne, and you're talking about it before, Daphne's been throwing strikes and nine spares, and that has been it. And Tracy right now has got to start pr producing some X's, or else this is not getting out of game five. Hit it. Seven. No, oh, man. I don't know if you heard Tracy there. She said if she had savages on her shirt, uh, that seven pin would have fell. Yeah, bowling right now. Again, she's not throwing a bad ball. She's just not carrying. Yeah. And that is always trouble against somebody that is carrying. Yep. All right, Tracy makes a strike there, going to the third frame. G Town down by, oh, at least 42 at this point. I'm sorry, 32 at this point. Could be more. Yeah, it's frustrating when you lose a game or a match and you're th actually throwing the ball well and you're just not, you're not getting the carry that your it's opponent not, you're is. Th you're throwing the ball and the pin's just going falling. And oh, hey, uh, not okay. a fail. Well, that's better than golf. Yeah, hey, hopefully that, yeah, that's definitely better than that four. So finally, Tracy gets on the board by the strike. Yep. And so she needs it. a lot more of those, but more importantly, once again, She's relying on Daphne Smith to make a mistake, and I'm not sure that's a really good alliance point. No, this is actually going for the team's 13th in a row here, too, dating back to last game. Looking for a 313. 
This is 13. Yeah. 13 in a yep. row, maybe? Yes! There goes the seven. That's just, that's, and all so of a sudden, that's we a, hear Nick Smith in the background. So all of a sudden, Nick, Nick Smith has infiltrated the G-Town area. Nick, Nick, Nick Smith, what, Daphne is the real Smith now? Is this what we're hearing? No, I mean, she had to marry to become a Smith, so no, that's not Oh, oh no. <laughs> that's a good comeback by Nick there. Yeah, Nick Smith may be having a bowling ball for dinner if she keeps that up. Yeah. All right, let's go. Hi, for honey, what's for dinner? Yeah, I got you a steamed bowling ball, which I'm going to oh. shove down your throat. Right now, Daphne's showing, hey, showing strikes down G-Town, so four in a row for Daphne. Yeah, that's, that's 14 dating back to the last one. I love it. Needless to say, this next shot for Tracy almost certainly needs to be a strike. Yeah. If you notice, Megan may not be seeing the bowling alley for a while. Peyton may not be seeing it either. Here comes Tracy's shot here. That ball looks good. Yeah, now yeah, the seven goes down. Right. Well, she's cut yeah. the damage down to 32. Yeah. And at least what that does mean. <laughs> All right, so we've got. As, yeah. Yeah, okay. As they do that. Well, I will say this, and, and, and looking at it this way, this is actually a smaller amount that they were down before Daphne made that mistake in game three. And so it's true. If, if they can keep it down to like a little bit over 30, they've got a shot here. Yeah, it's not, it, it, like I said earlier. Not I, insurmountable I, at this point. It's not over until it's over because well, it needs to strike Tracy's here a fighter. And she'll she get it. A three, three in a row for Tracy. Now, if he keeps it close, this is when that strategy comes into play. Because I think, arguably, Megan has got a better look than Peyton, and they both have yet to show up in this game. Yeah. I don't mean show up physically, not show up mentally. I'm sure right. they'll both show up mentally. Yeah. Daphne Smith right now on lane five, in game five. Looking for more than five. But she'll get five. Very nice. And right now, that's 15 in a row, if my math is correct. Yes. For the Savages, we are going into the second half of game five, and G-Town somehow has got to figure out a way to get 33 more pins more than Savages in the second half of this game, or if not, the match is over. Now, they're chatting here a little bit, talking about strategy, I believe. Sort of staring at each other. Is it time to tag yet? Yeah, chatting over here. Yeah, Daphne's chatting with the Smith coach, yeah, who, by the way, is not Nick Smith. It is somebody else. That's Ken Foy. Aha, it is Ken yep. Foy. Yeah. So, of that Foy Smith combination that you were telling me about earlier. Yeah. And so, and Peyton, Peyton's going to listen to any of the other three. Um, you know, trying to figure out when to get that the tag in the right spot. Well, they're, they're keeping Daphne in, and I actually think that's a very good move because what they're really hoping for is to see something that's not a strike out of either Leslie or Megan in the sixth or seventh, which could take a lot of pressure off Peyton. So I think this is a good plan here. Here's Smith looking for 16 in a row and gets one down, doesn't get the pen. Mm. Almost a little bit of a mishmash. Yeah, G10 wants a seven pin. Daphne wants none of it. Clearly, they're going to keep Daphne in to make the spare. Yeah. Neither team has made a tag to this point. Nope. But this is a little bit of an opening here that G-Town can have. However, as I just said, G-Town has not made a tag, so eventually Megan's going to show up. The question is when. Right. I mean, I, if it's me, I go all or nothing to let Megan uh, bowl the next frame. That's what I would do. Go and get that tag out of the way. And that's exactly yeah. what and, they're doing. And that's what they're going to do, yeah. And that's a smart move also for another reason. Leslie, with the exception of what the heck was that in frame one, Leslie prefers, I'm sorry, Tracy prefers yep. the third frame, third lane much more than the fourth lane. 
Here's Megan, six frame. Looks Keep good. them in there. It looks good. Uh, no, ten pin. Uh, freaking ten again. So G Town fails to capitalize on the spare attempt over by by the Savages. Yep. So we're still looking at a 32 pin pin deficit that they have to get out of, and they only have four frames to get out of it. Yeah. And again, it was a great, great ball by Megan. They just the 10 pin is not falling for him. No, that's a good ball. That that pin could have went. Uh oh, oh no. that's a problem though. Oh yeah. He cannot do that unless he's going to quickly tag in on frame seven. Sorry, Tracy's going to tag in on frame seven. Yeah, but the damage, the damage on that frame may have already been done. Yeah, they're going to they're going to need another Greek church assistance. They need, they're um, going to need a few. They're down by 40 and change at this point. Tracy shot the seventh frame here. That's that good. looks good. It is. Yep. Now I'm sure Tracy wishes, gee, I'd like to stay out here, but she can't. Yep. Tracy and Daphne are right now talking. Maybe one person wishing good game to the other one. Because it's going to get to that point. The best that G-Town can do, 235. Savage is right now on a 279 pace. There's Payton looking to keep it 279. Ooh, Ooh. It almost had the 4 6. And here's Daphne Quick coming in. And again, you don't need to be a hero here. Keep the frames up, fill the frames. So the Savages get exactly what they wanted, which was a non strike from G Town in the sixth frame. Yeah. Yeah, that. that yeah, that is that'd have been a spare that's a killer. Like, where a whole Even if it's here. a spare, yeah, exactly. But that is a killer. Daphne will make the spare as we go into the eighth frame. And if I'm not mistaken, that was the first ten pin either team had missed this entire uh, match. Uh, that you may be right there. I know yeah. there have been other opens, but they have not been of that variety. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think they've been the 10 they've, they've, they've had a lot of them, and I thought they made them all until that point. So. I think you're correct. Eighth frame coming up. Again, if Savages keep marking, they're basically going to shut G Town out. They don't need the double, they just need marks and good count. Here's Daphne looking to get Savages back on the strike train, and she won't do it. Sit, mm, ten flat. pin. She's like, I'm okay. It's a ten pin. I got it. Now, if she wants to return the favor and flag it, then it starts to become a little bit more interesting. Maybe not much more interesting, but a little bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah it, it really needed for that 4-6 to stay up for um, Peyton that last frame. Or for uh, you know a split combination here for Daphne, but um, well, if she does flag it here, I'm trying to add a little bit of excitement. If yeah, she does yeah. flag it here, then they've got a double somewhere along the line. Yeah, well, I'm gonna uh -oh. be. Oh, oh no! Boy. Well, that Gordon got I'll a little you. bit of intrigue now. Uh, yeah, I mean, because now you you've got four, uh, four, uh, 46 is the max for their savages, and 35 is the max for G Town, so. Megan's gonna come in and get a chance to redeem her open. Well, this must, and I mean must, and I mean must, 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 must be a strike. Yeah. Spares are no good at this point. The only thing that's good are letters. Here's a shot for Megan. This has got to be a strike here. Crumbled it, crumbled it, fall. Fall. No, oh, it's it does not, not fall. fall. Seven pins up there. It, it, it wobble, wobble. And that's now the beginning of the end for G Town. Because again, the best that they can do is 215, which means Savages only need a mark somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's unfortunate. She she made the right adjustment, made sure she got the 10 out, and that and that seven pin just did the old, um the Kembe Matumbo little wagon at her. Yeah, that miss spare is also looming very very large right now yeah. at this point. Because you yep. don't know whether or not they could have come back, but you do know that they definitely could have added some pressure. Yep. And adding pressure is always good. Yeah, and the, and the and the 44 on the board to start, you know, didn't help them. It did not. Then, then they were they were kind of holding holding steady there for a minute, and then that six frame just did it, you know. And that I hate I hate that for them. And 
But we'll see. We've, like well, you Tracy's, said, stranger things have happened. Tracy's back in. She's going to finish the game. Now they need a bunch of opens for Savages. But once again, now this really needs to be a strike or mathematically the game's over. Oh, there's, there's a strike. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, she okay. said something. So, so I promise it wasn't me. Um, I definitely, I don't think that was me either. No, I don't. Was that I don't, me? I don't think it was me. No, I don't think it was me. I don't know, but Tracy gets fired up. Well, that's, that's a, I think she was, I think she was a natural redhead at some point because she stays fired up like one. Well, what, what it also means is this. That may be her warning shot that she's fired up and Savage has better close them out this game. Because I'm not sure you want to fire it up, Tracy oh, Bowling. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I don't know what the heck's going on over here. All right, so now Daphne's going to come in to finish this out. Yep. So now let's see here. Yeah, my, they're going to need marks. Mark, Mark. Because you had the strike up there from G Town. Daphne Smith up. First thing is to get a mark. If not, she's going to have to double in 10. But she'll mark. Yep. Now, a 9-0 is a 214, which would not shut out G-Town. So, any mark, game over, match over, Savages retain the title. If Daphne Swift opens in any way, shape, or form, this becomes interesting. Yes. And then obviously some sort of weird bad count, six pair six or something like that, and I, could I, also open up the door for G-Town. I would love to see Tracy get back up there with as fired up and as frustrated as she is right now. I would love it, because she'll, if she has to throw three, she'll get all three. But Here it is right now, this is game, set, match. Oh, and Tra oh, Tracy almost got her wish. Yeah, that That's four a nine pin, pin up there, stayed. and that four pin almost came up. Yeah. So now it's, uh, all she got to do is lock it out by making this. Um, I do not think Daphne Smith is going to miss a nine pin. Well, I didn't think Daphne Smith would miss a ten pin either, so. Uh, well, that's I, true. I can't comment on this she, one. Well, she's feeling a lot better about a nine pin, I'm sure, than a ten pin. There's oh. a shot. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now. You and I both went, Ugh. Yeah, so now she's got to keep it on the lane. Yeah. Anything at all, as long as the gutter monster doesn't come out and take a bite out of it. Anything at all from Daphne Smith and the Spartanburg Savages shall retain. Yes. At this point, Daphne's hanging out, watching. Oh, I see what she's uh, watching. She's watching her teammate possibly shoot a 300 here, and she uh, won't. No, that was uh, that was Casey Pike. That was Casey going for 300 there. Had the uh, front 10. Casey, uh, she strikes a lot. She also has her Vixens match this weekend. Well, Casey Pike strikes a lot. She's had some quality time with that Vixens title. Yeah, let's go! Uh, there, there's the shot. Now, all of a sudden, that miss, that miss 10 pin is now looming large. Because it ain't going to matter. Savages are going to hold on to the Vixens tag team title. They're going to win it in five, but it was a little bit closer. Yeah, it was. It was there, especially on the scoring end. Yeah. But I say I'm, I'm, I'm proud of um, G Town's effort here. I'm proud of, um, you know, Megan, uh, you know, stepping in uh, for CJ and giving it all she could. She threw the ball great. Um, but just like Tracy just had there with that 10 pin, same kind of thing. It's like they had the 10 pins were glued down on them. And to today. be honest, I actually thought that Megan had a better luck for the majority of the match than Tracy did. To, to, be, to be quite honest, I mean, Tracy yeah. had, Tracy didn't have a bad luck, but she was just leaving plaque 10, plaque 10, plaque 10. Yeah. Well, so, it, was, it was just one of those things where yep. you just, it's unfortunate it happened. And, um, you know, I, I hope to see G-Town rebound and, and climb back up in the series and, and get to fight the uh, uh, the Vixens tag team again uh, I'll, at I'll, some point. I'll tell you this, I really don't think the pressure phase phase Megan at all. I thought that she threw the ball really well, especially for her first time out. 
I, if you told me that she was a 180, 190 bowler, bowler, I would think that her average is a lot higher than that, to be honest. I, I thought she acquitted herself quite nicely today. Uh-oh. Well, apparently we just found out where the ire came from. Yep. And so, at least a fortunate thing is it was not from either you or me. No, it's, it's, and uh, it's, it's something that Nick said apparently, um, which is not surprising. He says stupid stuff all the time, and pe people don't know how, people don't know how to take Nick. And if you don't, if you haven't been around Nick enough, you know he gets a little. Eh. But I mean, sometimes I will I will just put it this way, and I will be the most politically correct that I've been in a very long time. Sometimes, you know, there is a line that sometimes people cross or do not cross. And to be quite honestly, um, it, it seemed like any time that there was a little in the match or any time there's a little bit of a threatening thing, you're like, no problem, I will handle it. And then you go out and you turn around and you handle it. So explain to me about this because I've known you forever. I've known you about the Hall of Fame and the credentials. You're a Vixens champion for a reason. You've been a Vixens champion for a reason. How much of that experience went into this win today? I think a lot of it. Um, just being able to make a good shot when you need to is, you know, important and having the pressure on you and not letting that pressure get to you and just make the, the shot when you need to is important. And doing the Vixen series, there's a lot of you need to strike out to win or you got to make this fair so it definitely plays in with it talk to me about your partner because peyton was clutch today talk to me about that a rock star today that's what i told her i was like every time she came in she was 10 back um i will say we got a a, a break start go our way but usually you know when you win you get the breaks um it just it is what it is but yeah she threw it great so fourth frame you lift the, uh, shall we see, the Church of the Episcopalian up there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, the half, the half in, in the middle of game three. So talk to me a little bit about that because it was sort of like, uh-oh, and it looked like that there was going to be a momentum swing going in one direction. Talk to me about that. So when I threw that one, I just got on it a little bit more, um, and I knew it as soon as I let it go that it was going to check early, um, and it did. Um, and... I just knew I had to put that shot behind me. Any, any bowling, you know, you can't let one shot ruin your mood. So I put that behind me and get back on it. So game four was the turning point. I believe your teammate is uh, showing back up here. So Daphne was talking about you being a rock star, and I agree with her on that because you came in, you threw a bunch of clutch shots, especially whether it was either to keep the train going or whether it was to make some clutch spares. Talk to me a little bit about the strategy because at the beginning it was just like, all right, I'm going to throw the first ball and then I'm going to let Daphne figure it out and make the spares. And then all of a sudden it went from, wait, I can handle this. Talk to me about your mindset. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was I was throwing it good and then I'd leave. I felt like it was hitting the pocket, left some pins. I knew she could get them, you know. I had faith in her, but I also had faith in myself. But, you know, we got a tag, so let her handle it. <laughs> one, more, one more thing I'm going to chat about here because I thought it was a hysterical part of the game. Actually, I'm going to go back to one thing that I asked Daphne first at the beginning. The tide seemed to turn in that third game, but then you righted the ship back in that fourth frame, in the fourth game. What was that moment in the fourth game that you said, okay, I've got this now? Um, I don't really know. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. I just got it, I guess. <laughs> All right, one last thing before, before I turn the mic over. Five pin came up. You threw the shot. Okay. Let's, let, let's, let's discuss... I want to know the mental process going on in, in terms of, of this because I was actually joking around and I, and I said I will pay money to see Daphne go over that and then flag the five pin. I sort of figured that tag was going to happen regardless. Talk to me about this. Okay, so there was no talking between her and I. I threw the ball and she said, I'm going. I said, okay. I got the, so the, was, the tag from the back and yeah. it was her dad and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to get the five pin. I was have thrown at it. Yeah. I said, go ahead. And I was like, all right, don't miss this on national camera. <laughs> I said, like, go ahead. It's girl. so funny. It's like a five in is more pressure than having to strike because you're like, you don't want to miss that you when everybody's watching. It. I'll guarantee you, if you miss that, that's going on YouTube. Oh, Someone's snagging the video and that's going that's over to YouTube. That's I was like, don't miss the five in. <laughs>
So, uh, final thoughts, final anything uh, that either of you want to discuss. It's, it's your turn with the mic. I'm just going to shut up all you. I say um, I want to challenge other teams to get some tag team vixens in the series. Um, this was mine and Jacqueline and um, Casey's idea to get this started. Um, we approached Ray um, and he went up the chain to try to get this for us. Um, I think women prefer to bowl um, on a team, doubles, you know, versus singles. Um, and I think this is a growing opportunity for the UBA. Um, and I can, like I said, I want to encourage others to get in the series and join. I think it's a, a lot of fun. It's not just singles. You got your partner to lean on. Um, and I love it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun.